This has been Chef Flexi. I want to see 107 more facts about Steven Universe. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Bye. When Steven Universe first burst onto the scene in 2013, we couldn't get enough of the little half-human, half-gem and his gang of magical beings. So how could 107 piddly little facts ever be enough for this beloved animated adventure? It couldn't! Neil McNeil here with Federator, and we've compiled 107 more facts you should know about Steven Universe. And just a warning, some of these facts could be a little spoilery, so proceed at your own risk. Let's get started. Fact number one, in keeping up with the vibe that Steven is based on her younger brother, Rebecca Sugar based the show's visuals and themes on video games, TV shows, and movies she and her brother experienced together as children. Fact number two, according to Rebecca Sugar, the Legend of Zelda series was a huge influence on the show's story, aesthetics, and music. Fact number three, speaking of music, each crystal gem has their own instrument associated with them that is used for their individual pieces of theme music. When certain characters appear together, the piece that plays will combine their respective instruments. Fact number four, Pearl's theme music contains a piano, Garnet's is associated with a synth bass, and Amethyst's music utilizes an electric drum kit. The guitar is prominent in the theme music for Rose Quartz, and whenever Steven uses Rose's powers, stringed instruments can also be heard. Fact number five, in the episode Sadie's Song, Steven catches Sadie singing along to a catchy pop tune playing on the radio. The song is used again later in the episode for a montage sequence, and if the voice behind that original tune is familiar to you, it's because it's sung by Olivia Olsen, who is also the voice of Marcel the Vampire Queen on Adventure Time. Fact number six, Olivia Olsen was also the little girl who covered Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You in Love Actually back in 2003. Number seven, the design for Onion's secret room is similar to that of Pixar's speakeasy room. Fact number eight, World War II never took place in Steven's world, but before you think about moving there, keep in mind that holidays also don't exist in Steven's world. Gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. Fact number nine, Sugar has said that the central theme and meaning of Steven Universe is the unconditional love a family has for one another. Fact number 10, one of Sugar's goals in creating Steven Universe is representing groups of people who haven't been featured very much in mainstream television and making them relatable to everyone. Number 11, Rose's armory is based on Batman's Batcave. One of the more noticeable similarities is the giant penny on display in the armory, which is identical to the giant penny Batman kept as a trophy for the Batcave after one of his clashes with Harvey Two-Face Dent, who has an obsession with coins. Number 12, just like Rebecca Sugar, Steven plays a ukulele proficiently. Like creator, like creation. Number 13, in the series canon, Steven wrote the show's theme song itself. Steven also has perfect pitch. Number 14, Matt Burnett and Rebecca Sugar have described Steven as a savant when it comes to music. Number 15, from the early conceptual stages until the time it airs, a Steven Universe episode typically takes anywhere between 9 and 12 months to make. Number 16, Steven Universe is a board-driven show, meaning that the writers do not write traditional scripts. Instead, episode outlines are written and given to teams of storyboard artists that are responsible for visualizing the episode and writing the dialogue. Number 17, Ian Jones Quarty claims that the actual discussions about the show's canon in the writer's room have been way sicker than anything the internet has created or fantasized about regarding Steven Universe. Number 18, the characters can look widely different from episode to episode depending on who is storyboarding. Number 19, storyboard artist Jeff Liu composed the song Cookie Cat on his Nintendo Game Boy. Number 20, in October of 2015, an official hardcover guide to the show was released titled Steven Universe, The Guide to the Crystal Gems. It was written by Rebecca Sugar herself and finally spills the beans on some of the show's best kept secrets regarding, you guessed it, the Crystal Gems. Number 21, which crying breakfast friend are you has been made into an actual online test you can take, word for word and question for question. Number 22, in addition to Rose, the other established quartz type gems in the series are Steven, Jasper, and Amethyst. Number 23, fusions have no basis in romance or attraction. They are based purely on the personal relationship between the partners who have fused. Though that's not to say that they can't be romantic. Number 24, Sardonyx was given a gap in her teeth by storyboard artist Joe Johnston, who also has a gap in his teeth. Number 25, one of Sardonyx's lines is, but yes, occasionally I am known to smash. According to Matt Burnett, Sardonyx would play as King DDD, who also has a giant hammer, as her main in Smash Bros. Number 26, Rebecca Sugar recommended to Joe Johnston that he look at the choreography for the K-pop group Soon Me for animating Pearl and Garnet's fusion dance. Number 27, the storyboards for Pearl and Garnet's fusion dance were even timed to Sun Mi's track Full Moon. Number 28, normally gem fusions have their own individual voice different from 
their component gems. Malachite is so unstable that she doesn't have any voice at all. Number 29, Sugarlight's Tower Smashing Punch is inspired by both Popeye's Twister Sock Punch and Donkey Kong's Giant Punch in the Super Smash Bros. series. Number 30, despite retaining Rose's gem, Rainbow Quartz would be very different if Steven were to fuse with Pearl. Number 31, Opal was originally meant to make a Manji symbol with her four arms when summoning her weapon. This was scrapped because the Manji symbol is basically a reverse swastika, the infamous symbol of the Nazi party, and is commonly misinterpreted as such. Number 32, Opal's design has changed twice due to Pearl and Amethyst's respective regenerations. Number 33, Garnet's electrical powers are a result of combining Ruby's heat with Sapphire's cold. Number 34, seeing as how she's all of the crystal gems fused together, Alexandrite's weapon is all of the crystal gems weapons combined. Number 35, much like an actual fusion, Alexandrite's design was made through the combined efforts of Rebecca Sugar, Colin Howard, and Danny Hines. Number 36, Devani is the first human gem fusion, being three quarters human and one quarter gem. I'm pure human biologically, but culturally I identify as a gem. Don't judge me. Number 37, according to Rebecca Sugar, Stevani is a metaphor for all the terrifying firsts in a first relationship, and what it feels like to hit puberty and suddenly find yourself with the body of an adult. How quickly that happens, how it feels to have all this new power over people, or to suddenly find yourself objectified, all for seemingly no reason since you're still just you. Number 38, the fusion of Steven and Connie Stevani does not have a specified gender. What has been confirmed though is that Stevani uses gender neutral pronouns such as they and them. Number 39, the key Stone Motel is a real place. After the episode first aired, fans gave it joke reviews based on the show, which the creators weren't too happy about, though Ian thought it was funny. Number 40, in Keystone Motel, Stephen, Greg, and Garnet are traveling to the Keystone State. That is the nickname for Pennsylvania, and the picture on the brochure resembles this. Number 41, Ronaldo Fryman states in his blog, Keep Beach City Weird, that Beach City is located in Delmarva. In real life, Delmarva is a peninsula that occupies most of Delaware, along with portions of Maryland and Virginia. Fact number 42, in the show, however, Rebecca Sugar claims that Delmarva is its own state in the alternate Earth where Steven Universe takes place. Number 43, Beach City Funland is based on an actual theme park located at Booth Beach in Delaware named Funland that Rebecca Sugar and her brother went to during their family trips as children. Number 44, Ronaldo's blog talks about Delmarvacon, which is held in a place called Charm City. Charm City is the nickname of the real-life city of Baltimore in Maryland. Number 45, Ronaldo Fryman is part of a community that calls themselves Planties, where he dresses up as a ficus. Number 46, Ronaldo believes that Stevani is a specially fabricated bodysuit built by the Illuminati for the purpose of international espionage. Number 47, when Perry Dot's distress signal interrupts everybody's TV, Ronaldo thought she was an eco-terrorist who failed her mission to free all of the animals from the local zoo. Number 48, Connie's last name Maheshwaran means Lord of the Universe in Hindi. Number 49, in Winter Forecast, Connie says itadakimasu, which is a Japanese expression said before eating. Number 50, Connie was once referred to as Steven's girlfriend in commercials in Portugal, sparking YouTube conspiracies that they would eventually date. Number 51, Ian Jones QWERTY revealed that Connie's parents' first names are Doug and Priyanka. Number 52, Greg is a fan of the band Queen. In The Message, the Queen album News of the World can be seen inside Greg's van. He also owns a poster of Queen's 1975 album A Night at the Opera. Number 53, Greg single-handedly pays for all the expenses of Steven and the Crystal Gems. Number 54, he might pay for all of this through his own car wash, which he owns and operates. Number 55, the name of Greg's car wash, It's a Wash, is a play on the business term, a wash. A wash is a business decision that isn't profitable enough to be called a success, nor is it costly enough to be considered a failure. Number 56, Estelle feels voice in Garnet comes to her naturally because of how similar the role is to her personal life. She was the oldest of nine children and acted as a responsible mother figure and leader of the bunch. Number 57, Rebecca Sugar's favorite song in the series is Stronger Than You. The song is special to Sugar because she got to musically collaborate with Estelle, who she deeply respects as a musician. Number 58, the bodies of the crystal gems are actually projections generated by their core gemstone, like holograms, but with actual mass. Number 59, in addition to having a Nintendo 64 and GameCube in his bedroom, Steven keeps a Game Boy in his bathroom. Number 60, Steven is the only gem to have ever been born through biological reproductive means, technically making him a new kind of life form altogether. Number 61, the reason Steven is never seen attending a school of any sort is because he is homeschooled by the gems. Number 62, the Steven Universe crew often prepares food for the premieres of new episodes and posts pictures to their Tumblr. For reform, they had grape popsicle amethyst gemstones prepared by staff member Christy Cohen. Number 63, in an interview, Rebecca Sugar said that of all the gems, Pearl is the one Steven knows the least about. Number 64, Steven's trusty feline companion Lion is voiced by Dee Bradley Baker. 
Baker is known for voicing various creatures in animation and video games, including Appa and Momo in Avatar The Last Airbender. Number 65, Rebecca Sugar and co-developer Ian Jones Cordy attended the same college, the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Number 66, Lars and Sadie are some of Rebecca Sugar's earliest characters, having made them in college. And Ian is tired of people asking him how he got accepted into Cal Arts. Number 67, Rebecca Sugar isn't the only one putting their family into the show. Ian Jones Cordy said that Gunga Pizza is based off of his grandmother, who was actually the creator of Ghana's flag. Number 68, much like Ian's family, the pizza family hails from Ghana. Kiki and Jenny grew up in Beach City though. Number 69, Kofi Pizza's first name means Born on Friday. Number 70, the dance crowd and Alone Together are based off of actual Crooniverse members. Number 71, Season 1's episodes were aired out of order. Ian Jones Cordy posted the intended order on his Tumblr. Number 72, if you don't know Ian Jones Cordy's face, you may know his voice if you frequent Cartoon Hangover. He plays Wallow in Bravest Warriors. Number 73, when Steven is showing Hollow Pearl how to organize his messes in Steven the Sword Fighter, he places three toys on a shelf. The animal looks like Pikachu from Pokemon, the humanoid resembles Giatru Man from the game of the same name, and the miscellaneous figure is clearly the internet meme sensation himself, Sanic the Hedgehog, not to be confused with another blue hedgehog we all know. Number 74, the choreography of the fight between Hollow Pearl and Pearl during the same episode is identical to a sword fight found in the anime, Revolutionary Girl Utina. Number 75, the crew imagined the training room from the test to function like a buggy video game. Number 76, Golf Quest Mini is a parody of the Pokemon games. The line gotta sink em all is a jab at Pokemon's tagline, gotta catch em all. Number 77, at the beginning of Golf Quest Mini, Professor Sandtrap says it's dangerous to go alone, take this, which is a famous quote from the original Legend of Zelda. It's spoken by an old man in a cave that gives Link his first sword. Number 78, you might want to watch Ocean Gem again. The initial airing had color issues that were corrected in later airings. Number 79, instead of using a weapon like other gems, Lapis has Hydrokinesis, which is controlling water. Number 80, in House Guest, a Sailor Moon manga can be seen in Steven's room. Number 81, in Space Race, Pearl's uniform has a pink diamond on it. This is similar to how the Homeworld gems have diamonds on their attire. Number 82, on the design reference sheet, Pearl's tears in the episode Rose's Scabbard are labeled Ghibli tears, after the style of tears used in Studio Ghibli's animated films. Number 83, in the political power storyboard, Onion's bat had nails driven into it. In the final version, they were removed. Number 84, writer and storyboard artist Raven Molassi said that the purpose of Jasper wearing a cape in her debut was to look, quote, intimidatingly fabulous. Number 85, from the events of Jailbreak, it is implied that Steven is relatively immune to anti-gem technology because he is half-human. Number 86, in an early April Fool's joke, Matt Burnett said that Say Uncle was going to be completely canon and Steven and Pizza Steve would switch places afterwards. Number 87, a poster of K.K. Slider from Animal Crossing can be seen in We Need to Talk. Number 88, in the flashback during We Need to Talk, Greg calls Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl Harpo, Groucho, and Chico, referring to the Marx Brothers entertainers. Number 89, in Keeping It Together, a bottle of Lawn Lawn Milk, referencing Legend of Zelda, can be seen on the shelf behind Pearl. Number 90, the title of Season 2 episode Chill Tid means chill time in Norwegian Bakmol. The crew got the idea from an overseas Cartoon Network commercial. Number 91, after hearing Charlene Yee's takes as Ruby in Keystone Motel, Rebecca Sugar had to go back and change her drawings of Ruby's expressions to match the recording better. Number 92, the art style of The Answered was inspired by the work of German animator Lot Rieniger, who both Ian and Rebecca studied in college. Number 93, in The Answered, it's revealed that Ruby and Sapphire met 5,750 years ago. Fact number 94, in the season 2 episode Steven's birthday, Steven turned 14 years old. And number 95, in the same episode, it's revealed that Connie is 12 and 3 quarters. Number 96, in Nightmare Hospital, Connie says that she hasn't needed glasses for the last year. That means during the course of the series, Steven has aged from 12 to 14. Number 97, in Steven's birthday, Greg and Garnet are seen laughing at an album that Greg is holding. The cover looks a lot like Shine by Estelle, who is Garnet's voice actress. Number 98, it could have been great revealed that the gem's bodies automatically adjust to whatever the current gravity is. Number 99, a scene where Amethyst teaches Peridot to eat food was planned for log date 7152, but it was cut due to time restraints. Fact number 100, T-Pain is a fan of Steven Universe. His favorite crystal gem is Amethyst. He loves her attitude and her butt. Fact number 101, in April of 2015, Steven Universe's appreciation of video games came full circle when Grumpy Face Studios released the very first video game based on the show called Attack of the Light, Steven Universe RPG, and it's a super fun game. 
Fact number 102, for 100% authenticity, the game story was written by Rebecca Sugar and the Steven Universe writing staff. Fact number 103, the game features a turn-based combat system inspired by games like Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario. Number 104, in the United Kingdom, part of the What Can I Do music video was censored to remove part of Rose and Pearl's fusion dance. Number 105, like every other modern cartoon in existence, Steven Universe has its own comic book. The book is written by Jeremy Serace, drawn by Coleman Engel, and published by Boom Studios, the same publisher as the Adventure Time comics. Number 106, Garnet and Pearl appeared as background characters at a bar in DC Comics' Batgirl issue number 41, volume 4. And finally, fact number 107, Lion 3 Straight to Video was nominated for Outstanding Short format animated program at the 67th Emmy Awards in 2015. To celebrate, writer Ben Levin publicly released the episode's original story outline online. Thanks for watching Toon Dub's 107 more facts you should know about Steven Universe. If you liked this one, perhaps you'd like some of the other shows on our channel. And if there's any other movie or TV show we absolutely need to cover, let us know in the comments below. Because remember, Frederator loves you. Big fan, Frederator. So... I just saw your 107 facts on KND, and I actually stayed till the end. Steven Universe is awesome, and I think it deserves another one. Thank you.